Hi folks, Quill18 here, bringing you some more Let's Play Civ 5 as India, going for the three-city cultural win that is required for the Bollywood achievement. Now, unfortunately, as when uh, we last left this off, disaster struck. We lost yet another video to the beast that is computer glitches. Uh, seems to be a big problem with uh, with Civilization. Had some big issues with it the last time around and ended up having to replay a bunch of stuff and then also still lost some. Um, and I just didn't feel like replaying a bunch this time around because I actually felt like the game was going pretty good direction. Plus, since we are going for cultural gameplay, it's not like there's a bunch of warfare to be missing. Uh, so I am just going to continue on from where we left off. Now, um, what I... Some of the issues, I believe, may have been due to hard drive space. Um, I do tend to stop the recordings before I run out of hard drive space, but in processing the video afterwards, it created a lot of temporary files, and I think what happened is it ran out while doing the processing, which is why the video got cut off partway through. But, thanks to an amazing Black Friday sale, uh, I got a brand new 2 terabyte hard drive uh, for my computer, uh, very, very inexpensively, and if we just drag this over here, you can see, oh, I have a drive with a whole lot of empty space, and that's what I'm going to use for the recording now, so I'm hoping that it will make things a little more stable, plus then I won't have to juggle recordings quite so badly, um, which should just make my life a little easier and make me do more recordings. So without further ado, let's find out how the hell things were going on. So we left off the last game at, uh, around 600 AD, I believe. It is now 1600 AD, so about a thousand years have passed. Now, of course, we haven't uh, expanded beyond our three cities, because that's what we're doing for the achievement, but a lot of things have, uh, have changed. Um, fairly recently, I actually developed um, the ability to travel th across the ocean, so I have been exploring things on the other continent. So we've got a little bit of a peek at how things are going there. Uh, Score-wise, we are in the top three, but as you can see, uh, Ramses and Darius are uh, quite far ahead of the pack in terms of score. That being said, um, I'm pretty happy about how things are going. Uh, I don't know, you know, what what the ideal amount of culture per turn at you know on turn 237 is, but we're currently generating 126, and it seems to be it feels pretty quick to me. Uh, if I pull up, can I pull up the social policies here? Yeah. Uh, as you can see, we're just one step away. We're going to get it actually uh, in two turns. We're going to pick up free religion uh, pick in piety, which will give us two more free policies, which will help accelerate things quite a bit. In fact, in hindsight, I shouldn't have rushed to finish tradition. I should have finished piety first, then gone back and finished tradition at some later point. Um, we are basically done buying tiles. We do have a whole lot of territory around each one of our cities. We've got all the important resources, especially if I bring up the... Uh... Oh, no, I've got the resource icons already. Okay. Um, you can see we've got all the key resources around all of our cities. Everything that we can reach belongs to us. Um, so at this point, I no longer need to buy tiles. There's still a few more that we could pick up, but our culture is such that uh, we're going to probably pick those up automatically, and it's not the end of the world if we don't get it. Um, so as a result... I've got a lot of money to spend, and what I'm also I've got extra money kicking around because I'm continuing to sell my luxury resources time and time again, I, and strategic resources. I have so much excess happiness that I can easily afford to do that. So I keep selling them off for you know like 300 gold a pop, and I keep building up a big economy. So and I was using that to help me rush buy some tiles, uh, just because even though I did have the culture and it was going to expand. It's very important that each one of my cities has all the quality tiles that it uh, needs, so I have been uh, purchasing those. But I don't have to do that anymore. So now my money is finally going into uh, making friends with cultural city-states as much as possible. I have just started that, so I've got uh, I've got a few relationships here. Uh, that's neutral, but I've got yeah friends, allies uh, here and there, and I'm picking up more and more of them. Um, they uh, they don't necessarily generate the most culture, but it's not bad. In fact, about uh, maybe uh, 
it's hard to say because the numbers don't add up right. No, I guess they do. Uh, almost 50%, maybe around 40% of my culture right now is coming from city-states. So that is adding up to a lot, and I'm just going to keep packing that on. Uh, let's take a quick look at our overviews here just to see how things are going. Diplomacy, yeah, we've... Uh, I don't know if it shows me here. I think this is what they're willing to offer. Um, but uh, we've... Deal history... Uh, that's just you can see I'm making tons of trades every few turns I'm talking to everyone selling as much as I can uh, global politics here we go uh, so you can see Ramses has a lot of world wonders that jerk uh, he's also at war with Genghis Khan uh, which actually has been really bad on Genghis Khan for a while Genghis was actually leading in the score uh, but then he pissed off the wrong couple of people uh, I think Catherine and Ramses went to war against him together and did a whole lot of damage um so you can see a few people. Ramses actually has a good amount of social policies going on, so he may be competing for a, a cultured win, and Doris has a good number as well. So there's a little bit of a risk there. Um, I, I don't think... I, I feel like our culture rate's probably going to be okay, uh, and I don't think we're going to lose to another Civ in terms of culture, but there could always be the possibility of losing some other way, especially if we're just not making enough. Um, what else we got? Military overview... Um, yeah, we don't get an a overview of the strength. What I've got is just a few forces, but when uh, I do get a new technology, I've been upgrading them, so their strength has been staying up pretty well. Um, either between the, our military or our few alliances, or just because I'm trading so much that everyone likes me that way, uh, we haven't actually gone to war with anyone. I don't think we've even gotten any demands. Uh, so except for the, the time I went to war with Genghis Khan, you know, like 3000 BC to snipe his settler, and when I went to war with, uh, with Askia over here to take out his city, um, things have been totally peaceful. It's just been an economic and diplomatic game. Uh, in fact, in theory, if I make friends with enough city-states, I could just win a diplomatic victory as opposed to this uh, cultural route if, uh, if I don't make enough culture. So there's a possible backdoor win that way. Economic in overview, um, I guess there's not much to say here. You guys can pause and look at those if you're really interested. Victory, again, not a whole lot that's showing here. One person did die. Um, it doesn't show them up any here, but someone on the other continent actually got killed off. Um, demographics. So, uh, we're actually really quite high up in terms of population. Only Darius has more people than we do. Uh, so our cities are quite large. Um, this is food production, uh, gold production, land. We're not doing too hot, but that's obvious. Soldiers, we're only in fourth place. We're decidedly middle of the pack. Uh, so we may want to consider upgrading our military a bit. Approval. We're number one. Every, our civilization is happy. We've actually gotten a few golden ages. Just finished one, actually, and uh, really been taking advantage of that. And literacy second, so this is uh, this is based on your science rate, I believe. So we're pretty good. Again, Darius. Darius is number one in most categories, so he's definitely the threat. Um, but it's not like we're going to go to war with him. We simply don't have the means to maintain that big of a uh, military, so... Yeah, uh, oh, let's check the science, and then we will start actually playing. Currently going towards scientific victory, as you can see, there weren't a lot of texts open. Um, or, did I say scientific victory? Scientific theory is what we're going for. Um, and we're going to pick up gunpowder next. I don't remember why. I think that, I had that queued up. I think the interest is just uh, upgrading my military a tiny bit because they're a little outdated. So we'll pick up the musketmen and do a few upgrades, and that should hopefully help. Uh, beyond that, the next cultural um, building is not for a little while away, uh, unless I'm thinking incorrectly here. Like, there's wonders, of course, that give, like, one culture each, generally speaking, but it's a lot of maintenance, or a lot of uh, production to put into something that only produces uh, one culture per turn. Um, and some of these cult uh, these wonders really don't make sense for such a small empire. Like, the Statue of Liberty actually sounds quite good, but uh, it's the sort of thing that seems to scale up really well if you've got many cities, so I'm not 100% sure. But the uh, radio here... Okay, yeah, we're queued all the way to radio. The, you can see the numbers now. Uh, we can pick up broadcast tower, which doubles our culture per turn in a city. Obviously, very, very huge. And uh, the Cristo Redentor, also really, really good. Um, it's a wonder, but you, when you build it, the culture cost of adopting new policies is reduced by 33%, so that'll go a really, really long way 
towards uh, helping us out. And let's check the cities really quick. So we're building a university here. The Taj Mahal here, which gives us great artist points, plus the culture, and prompts a golden age, which is never bad. And a museum here, which is plus five culture per turn. So not too shabby. So yeah, um, let's, let's continue forward and hopefully uh, onward towards victory. Got some movement here. I'm a little concerned, you know, hopefully no one will declare war on me, but I'm not necessarily in the greatest defensive position. I think we can hold up. I just realized, I don't think I ever got around to building uh, my unique buildings in these cities, and they actually do generate culture. I have to build a wall first, and I don't think I was building those. Oh yeah, we should spend our money to uh, get some influence with a friend. And there we go, Inf may adopt a policy. So I'm going to pick up the uh, free religion, two free policies. Yes. And rather than finish piety right now, I'm actually going to go into patronage. Just because we are going to play around the city-states a lot, and this will give us really uh, a lot more bang for our buck in city-states. So right away, uh, our uh, relationships will decay a little bit slower. And also, we will grab... Um, actually, that's a good idea. We'll take the, uh, the minimum influence of all city-states, so it would start at 20. I haven't actually played with this too much. Hopefully it works like I think it does. Yeah, so you can see all these guys start at 20 or 30. So right away, uh, we are very, very close to becoming friends. So I'm just going to go down the list of uh, these civs and just pick the first one and uh, make them allies. Someone pointed out that the bigger gifts actually give you more influence for your money. So if I were to do the 250 twice, it would be 50 influence, but by going 500, it's 55. So I don't think I'd been aware of that or had forgotten, so definitely going to go with that whenever possible. There we go, we're now allied with Vienna. And our, uh, our influence will degrade more slowly, so that's really good. Um, also, let's take a quick look to see if anyone's got any money. Um, 233 seems to be the most. So I'll wait a couple more turns and then try to do some trading. Maybe we've got something that we can sell someone. So our culture's gone up a little bit. So yeah, at this point, less than 20 turns from now, maybe 15, yeah, 15 turns from now, we will get another policy. Um, assuming we can keep up this pace, we need another 15... Uh, so 15 squared, ooh, that's like well over 100 turns. Um, I don't know, when does the game end? I'm not actually sure how many turns until the end of the game. Uh, so I think we need, and, it, and that's assuming that our cultural rate keeps up with the increased cost. Um, and clearly I think we're going to need to pump a lot more culture into here. But I am hoping to increase this rate considerably simply by bribing people and building those museums and stuff would actually be quite nice. We'll see what we can do. God, I love the music in this game. Actually, playing as India, the music seems to be really quite nice. They always do a good job with the music. Civ 4 had great music. Civ 5 also. I think all the additions did. Okay, come on, next turn. Now, 1650. We're still Lord Gandhi of India. Okay, we'll trade next turn. Bangalore is about to grow, which is nice. It's like tons of happiness. Like, we can grow these cities big, 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 big. Um, actually, if I don't have fertilizer yet, I may want to consider picking that up, just so I can produce a lot more food. Just met Edinburgh. Uh, so we get a little bit of gold. This is militaristic. Okay, that's fine. Where are they? There they are. Hello. Okay, let's check the gold situation. There we go. Catherine.